give you somebody else just in case they didn't want to pay any money. Tell somebody else an incredible God deserves an incredible praise. Amen. Amen. Help yourself, Doc. I love being put in that song. Yeah. Incredible God. Yeah. By J.J. Harrison. Yeah. Because it spends time reminding us that despite where we might find ourselves in this life at any given time, that all of the time, God is nevertheless an incredible God who deserves incredible praise. That's right. That's right. And I don't know about you, but for the few minutes we're going to spend, and I do mean a few minutes tonight, uh, especially, and, and this is uh, uh, this is under the guidance of God's Spirit, we'll be here as long as God's Spirit will have us to be here. Uh, it shouldn't take me but about 45, 50 minutes. <laughs> But we serve an incredible God who is deserving of an incredible praise. Because it never ceases to amaze me with the grave that every time I get up in the morning, every time my circulatory system is operating correctly, every time my heart beats, and every time I inhale and I can exhale, and every time I exhale and I can inhale again, and every time I put one foot in front of the yeah. Every time my muscular system keeps working, even if I'm moving slow, every time I'm still moving, every time you climb out of the bed, even if, even if you have to climb out slow, every time you get out of the bed, every time you drive here, you're not in a car wreck, every time you fly on an airplane and you don't crash, every time you put gas in your car, there's always enough to get you exactly where God wants you to be. I find that I have to give God an incredible praise. Because he is an incredible God. And would you just help me tonight create an atmosphere where we want God to just know that we're thankful tonight. That even if we don't have everything we want to have, even if we're not driving what we'd like to be driving, even if we don't have the house we want yet and don't have the promotion we want yet, don't have the husband and wife we want to cuddle up with yet, don't have the financial prosperity that we would like to have yet, that God is still an incredible God. Can anybody help me tonight and just take five seconds and just let people know that down here on earth, before we get to heaven and join the angels, that even down here, we are willing to say that we serve a mighty and a powerful and a forgiving and a loving and a strong and a mighty and an incredible and an unbelievable God. And an incredible God deserves an incredible God. When you look at Psalms, Psalms really is, in a sense, a, a covenant cantata. Yeah. It's a cantata. It's a it's a choral composition of of songs and prayers where the people of God get to express how thankful they are that He is their God. Yeah. That it is uh, a a cantata, a collection of voices. That, that express that the righteous, not who are superior in morality, but who understand and acknowledge that they depend on and need God, and therefore, being made righteous by faith, they can render unto this kind of God an incredible praise. And when I look at songs, it, it doesn't take long to find your favorite song. Right? Because we all have something. We all know the Lord is my shepherd. And I, I shall not want. And he makes me lie down and green pastures. And he, he can lead you beside still waters. And he can do all those things. And, and when I look at songs, we have so many songs. Songs of, of triumph. You, you remember when David uh, wrote this song of triumph in Psalm 37. He said, fret not yourself. Yeah. Because of evil doers and be not envious of wrongdoers for they will soon fade away like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good and dwell in the land and be free in faithfulness and here's what I like. Delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. That's, that's triumphant song and, and prayer because it's telling if I, if I Elijah delight myself in the Lord 
then Brother Eric, he'll give me what I want. Some of us have it flipped around backwards. We want God to give us what we want before we develop the ability to delight ourselves in Him. But is there anybody here that came out tonight who's learned how to delight yourself in the Lord? That even if you didn't have everything you wanted to have, even if all your prayers hadn't been answered yet, even if your struggles had not been erased yet or eliminated, that you learn how to still say, God, I love you. And God, I thank you. And God, you've been good to me. And God, you keep restoring me. And you keep delivering me. And you keep strengthening me. And you keep sustaining me. That's triumphant praise. But every one of us also knows how troubling life can be. Because as soon as you get through reading and singing and reciting Psalm 37, then you can skip over and read things like Psalm 42. Because it says in Psalm 42, as a deer pants for the flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. And when shall I come and appear before God? Because my tears have become my food day and night while they say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How would I go without the throne and, and lead them in procession to the house of God? And then it says, why are you cast down, O oh my soul? Why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God. For I shall again praise Him, my salvation and my God. So whether we're in a time of trial or time of trouble, the Bible has something to say that we can assert how good God nevertheless is. Regardless of where we are, even in a time of trouble, we can assert that God is still good. And that's what we find as we quickly move through Psalm 22. We find that David is dealing with a time of challenge and conflict. David, it is believed, wrote this song, ascribed to him, because among other things, he was dealing with conflict. He's dealing with the challenge and the hardship of, watch this, being a servant of God in the midst of great struggle and sabotage and even attempts to stymie his ability to survive. Because if you remember, thank you, Holy Ghost, that the Bible says that David was anointed as the next king to succeed Saul. But Saul got jealous and envious and intimidated and insecure. And he literally began to go mad and he became obsessed with taking David out. And so the same young man that played his instrument to soothe Saul was now on the run from Saul. And he wrote this song in the midst of great turmoil and distress. And he had to learn how to pen the words after all of my struggles, after feeling abandoned, after asking God, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And why are you so far away from me? Why is there such separation and, and distance and silence? How come you're not listening? You're not answering my prayer. But yet, he said, you are holy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're enthroned on the praises of Israel. Yeah. In the midst of distress and disappointment and discouragement, yet you are hoping. Yeah, yeah. Praise is an active result. That's what I want you to understand tonight. Praise is an act of result. It is not just a ceremonial exercise. Right, right. We are not simply here to fulfill our ceremonial duties. Right. We are here because we are exercising resolve and resilience. We're here to say to God, yet in the midst of everything, yet in the midst of challenge, yet in the midst of heartbreak, yet in the midst of hardship, yet in the midst of unanswered questions and prayers and pain and perplexity, yet you are holy. Yet it's an act of resolve. But it's also appreciation for divine regality. Because in the text it says that after he gets through speaking and expressing his, his sentiments about being forsaken, being <laughs> separated, God's silence, being abandoned, being discouraged, and finding no rest, he says, yet you are holy. 
an act of resolve. And then he says, in throne. In throne. Lifted up. Raised up. Worthy of reference. Worthy of difference. Worthy of respect. In throne. That, that you are existing and, uh, and, and, and living and leading and guiding and directing from a different plane, a different level. It's appreciation of regality. That God sits above every other institution, entity of power. Yep. That because he's in throne, it doesn't matter who's in the White House. No. Right. And thank God. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Help me somebody. Yes. Who's in the White House? Yes. Thank God it doesn't matter who's in the governor's house. Yes. Thank God it doesn't matter what senators we have. It doesn't matter who's in Congress. It doesn't matter if they're Democrat or Republican. Because here's a news flash. Even Democrats sometimes don't have Appreciation service. We've got to be careful that we blindly accept everything just because it has the label we're comfortable with. Because even those who have been accustomed to being aligned with our interests must also be held accountable. Because if not, then they take you for granted. See how quiet we are. People will take it for granted. So that's why I be conscientious when these runoffs occur. And when I look at the statistics for the city marshal race, because I got to see them. I went to a meeting. I got to look at all the stats. And we had literally hundreds of people that looked like you and me that did not vote. Right, right, right. Right, right. You had Thanksgiving. So I'm going to get back to appreciation so I don't upset too many of y'all. No. But this is in the context of appreciating God's regality. That whoever we have in office, whoever our public servants are, whatever their failures, frailties, shortcomings may be, and news flash, whatever yours are and whatever mine are, because, because we all have some, that we have a God who's in throne. That we have a God who's lifted up. That we have a God who's above every other structure and so-called bastion of strength and power and authority. And if nothing else, you ought to give God praise that he's on the throne and that he still has control. And that his hands are still stronger than the hands of the enemy. That his arms still reach farther than the arms. Above everything else. Yeah. But I finish with this. Not only is praise an act of resolve and resilience that we have to say, yet in the midst of difficulty, you are holy. It's appreciation for divine reality that God's in throne. He's in a different and on a different plane. But it says then he's enthroned on the praises of Israel. Right. Now scholars very quickly, and I'm done, debate this because Really, when you look at it in Hebrew, it affords you two options. One that is considered very much more likely and common, the other considered very unparalleled and unique. On the one hand, when you read it in English, they read it, God is enthroned on the praises, or God inhabits the praises of his people, of Israel. That's the common and customary way that we usually understand it in English. But believe it or not, that is actually the unique and most unlikely way to read it in Hebrew. Right. Teach. Because the other option.
option in Hebrew that's considered more common and more likely is that it simply reads, God is enthroned, comma, the praises of Israel. Teach. It Teach. doesn't necessarily join that's right. the two, but it keeps them in close proximity. So it doesn't necessarily say, according to some scholars, that God will literally, that he's waiting on us to praise him so that he can come and have our praise. But it gives you the option of whether or not you want to take that route or simply take the route that says he's enthroned and there still ought to be praise. You know what I'm coming to say tonight? That's yep. not I'm not here to tell you which one to choose. I'm here to leave it open just like because if the scholars who've been in school for many years can't agree, then I'm not here to demand that you agree out. What I'm here to demand that you do affirm is that the same God who watched over you all last night is the same God that watched over you all last night. And the same God that watched over everybody in the middle last night is the same one that's going to watch over you all over there tonight. Yeah.